Hi guys, and welcome to TFL. My name is Charlotte Roadcap, and as you may know, I am the newest addition to this excellent little YouTube channel. So last week, this is pretty exciting news, I graduated with my bachelor's in chemistry, and I'm so excited about it, and I figured it would be pretty darn cool to take that knowledge and do a series called The Chemistry of Cars. So today we are going to be talking about how DEF works. So the ultimate goal of diesel exhaust fluid, DEF, is to reduce NOx emissions. Now, what's NOx? NOx is a family of about well, seven different nitrogen oxygen compounds. However, when in reference to combustion, we're only going to be talking about two of them. This guy, nitrogen monoxide, and this guy, nitrogen dioxide. Now, these two are extremely reactive because they have these unpaired valence electrons. So they do all kinds of really interesting atmospheric and biological chemistry, and a lot of times it's not so good. So reducing them is incredibly important. During combustion in a diesel engines, NOx emissions are produced by nitrogen gas combining with oxygen gas and forming nitrogen monoxide and then those nitrogen monoxide molecules further reacting with more oxygen gas to produce nitrogen dioxide. NOx emissions are produced in diesel engines for a couple different reasons. The first being that diesel engines run at higher temperature and higher pressure than a comparable gasoline engine. So this first reaction where nitrogen gas and oxygen gas come together and react, that requires an input of 182.4 kilojoules per mole. So this energy barrier is a lot more easily overcome at high temperatures and high pressures. Another reason why diesel engines produce a whole lot of NOx emissions is because they run lean most of the time. So you're going to have a whole lot of excess oxygen gas left over to react with the nitrogen gas to produce these NOx emissions. This doesn't really happen so much in gasoline engines. It does, but in a very, very small amount compared to diesel engines because of the fact that diesel engines run lean. Gasoline engines run off of the perfect, you know, stoichiometric ratio of approximately, you know, 14.7 parts air to one part fuel. So you're not really going to have a significant amount of NOx emissions in your exhaust. Talking about the negative effects, why does it matter that we reduce NOx emissions? Well, a couple different reasons. As far as biological reasons go, NOx has a very negative effect on plant growth. It also increases plant disease risk, and then it also increases their susceptibility to frost damage. So an anthropocentric reason for reducing NOx emissions is definitely because of how it affects your respiratory tract. So with you know high exposure, you're going to get inflammation in the lining of your lungs, and then with exposure over time, you're also going to have decreased lung function as well as an increased allergen response to certain things. So another big reason for reducing NOx emissions is definitely going to be its contribution to acid rain. So basically what happens is you have nitrogen dioxide reacting with, you know, water vapor in the air, such as you know, a cloud, and you're going to get nitrous acid and you're also going to get nitric acid both of which are contributors to acid rain. And again, since we've covered nitrogen dioxide, we have to cover what nitrogen monoxide do. So if you have four molecules of nitrogen monoxide reacting with three molecules of oxygen gas and two molecules of water, you're going to get four nitric acid molecules out of that. Then the nitrogen dioxides produced in this reaction and also the ones that were produced earlier absorb sunlight and then they produced more of that nitrogen monoxide and then also ozone. So you might be thinking, I thought ozone was good, and it is, but that's when it exists in the stratosphere, which is, you know, right above the troposphere, which is, you know, 20 to 30 kilometers approximately is where that protective layer exists to protect our planet from ultraviolet radiation from the sun. When ozone is in the troposphere, that's when the bad things start. NOx emissions are the main precursor to tropospheric ozone, and that is why it's so important that we reduce them. According to the World Health Organization, 22,000 premature deaths occur in urban areas in the European Union because of ozone production. So it's really important that we reduce this 
harmful gas. So now that we've kind of talked a little bit about, you know, why it's important to reduce NOx emissions, how do we go about doing that in a diesel system? Well, you go about it with DEF, which is 32.5% urea and 65.7% water. Now, you know, there's this kind of joke out there that urea is actually cat pee, but it's really not. I promise you, the uh, industrial production it actually involves ammonia and carbon dioxide. So, sorry to burst your bubble. <laughs> The history of urea is actually pretty darn cool. It was the first organic molecule ever synthesized in a laboratory. It was done by this gentleman right here in 1828. Now, this was the first guy to ever make an organic compound in a laboratory from inorganic starting materials. And this was a really, really important conceptual milestone in chemistry. This contradicted vitalism. Vitalism was the belief that there was some sort of vital spark or component to the molecules that make up life and that you couldn't actually make it because of this mysterious entity. Urea is not just used for the reduction of NOx in diesel systems. It's also used agriculturally as fertilizer. It is also used in the chemical industry as an incredibly important starting material for all kinds of different syntheses. And then you can also make urea nitrate, which is explosive. So you've got your little blue bottle of DEF. So you pour that in your DEF reservoir and in the system, it sprays into your hot exhaust and some really cool chemistry happens. So let's get to it. The urea and water react with the catalyst of heat to produce carbon dioxide and ammonia. The important part of this whole first reaction is the production of ammonia. So ammonia, then reacts with nitrogen monoxide and oxygen gas to produce nitrogen gas and water. Now that we've taken care of the nitrogen monoxide, it's time to deal with that gnarly guy, the nitrogen dioxide. So what happens is you have your nitrogen dioxide react with your ammonia to produce more nitrogen gas and more water. With all the benefits of using a diesel engine in your car or your truck, one of the main detractors is of course the production of these harmful gases, nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen monoxide. That's where DEF steps in. It steps in with its urea and its water and it transforms these harmful gases into much less dangerous compounds. We have carbon dioxide, nitrogen gas, and water. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so very much for watching. I absolutely loved making this video and cannot wait to make more. So if you have any suggestions as to what we can do for the chemistry of cars, leave them in the comments below. And I would like to give a little shout out to Jason from Engineering Explained because he was a bit of an inspiration behind this video. And if you guys are confused with any of these concepts, please check out Khan Academy where you can find all kinds of information on Lewis structures, on stoichiometry, on thermodynamics, whatever you want to find, you can find there. So thank you so very much for watching. Me and my little urea molecule hope to see you again soon.